Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan. Today we're gonna to be talking about the difference between the Cambridge Active versus the passive emitters. All right, so if you've watched our videos over the years, you've probably seen a number of uh, videos where we've talked about the Cambridge passive emitter, uh, but we haven't done a lot with the active emitter. So the purpose of this video is to show you guys kind of the differences between these two, and one might be more applicable for your application over the other. These are both uh, direct masking speakers, meaning they go in the ceiling and point down. Uh, so they both have that similarity and both connect with uh, network cables. Uh, they both also have a host of uh, pendant kits, drywall mounts, um, and surface mount kits available as well if needed. Uh, they both use, as I mentioned, network cable to connect. The major differences that you're going to find here is that the uh, active emitter is actually um, a self-powered speaker, meaning it has an amplifier built in. Uh, you know that it's connected correctly when you see the little green light inside the speaker. You may not be able to see that, but trust me, it's there. Also, the uh, active speaker requires a bit more accessories. Um, it requires a power injector, uh, as well as a power supply, and uh, some configuration inside the QTX300, whereas a passive emitter ready to go right out of the box. Uh, with the um, active emitter, you also get paging as well as music, whereas the passive emitter is only recommended for masking um, in these applications. You also cannot use a e EPW um, or a, an active emitter on the QT100 generator. You have to use QTX300 or 600. So which one's best for you? Uh, well, if you need music and paging, this is your only option. Uh, you can't use the uh, passive emitter um, for music unless you're using the QT100. You might find that um, you have an architect spec written or something like that where you need masking below 200 hertz. The passive emitter is not going to go below 200 hertz. The active emitter will. We'll hear that in a little bit. And if you need masking above 65 dBA, which is pretty loud, uh, you would need the active emitter. The passive emitter does not go that loud. The uh, passive emitter um, maxes out about 60 dBA, whereas uh, with masking, you can get up to 65 on the um, active emitter, and with music, you can get up to 74. Um, so that's pretty good volume, especially from a very small handheld uh, speaker like this. Um, but depending on your application, one or the other may make more sense. All right, so first I have hooked up to one of my zones, a single Cambridge uh, passive emitter. Let's hear what it sounds like. White noise, you know, crisp, not too harsh, not too uh, upsetting, but gives you a nice full, you know, nice full spectrum uh, sound, uh, but not a, low, a lot of, ton of deep, deep, deep full bass. All right, so now I'm gonna turn up the active emitter for us. So just based on um, the settings that I've done from the front panel alone, uh, you've got a much fuller sound, a deeper bass uh, sound that goes much lower than the, active, or than the passive emitter does. Uh, and it also is significantly louder, even at approximately the same setting on the, uh, on the uh, front unit of the QTX. So this definitely helps to uh, give you additional headroom that I can notice right off the bat. We've also got another video where I actually hook up the uh, active emitters for you guys and play some music through it. Uh, stay tuned for that and be sure to check that one out. Um, if you've got questions about which of these emitters makes the most sense for your application or what hardware you need, definitely reach out to us. Uh, click on the link down below or give us a call at the number you see here. Um, make sure and follow us so you can get notified when we do new videos. Drop us a like or a comment if we can help with anything. And until next time, guys, I'm Nathan. Take care.